Good evening. I look at the video now put out by Gene Kim, and this was a little while ago. This is back in 2016. And uh, dispensational salvations and raptures before welcome. And he's he's just now associating a tribulational rapture. He's talking about one guy here in the 1700s. Now I was talking about the martyrs. That's what Larkin does. The Markins get the the uh, the martyrs, tribulation martyrs get a resurrected body. It's not talking about a rapture. That's the gleanings in, in uh, Larkin. Some considerable time before the rest of their brethren in Christ will arise is a question I shall not pretend positively to give any answer unto. In 1909 to 1917, C.I. Schofield revealed different salvation plans long before Ruckman. He had one footnote on that. One footnote. That's not, and then and he, wrote, he wrote, I have it down here. Schofield also said that the law was not a means uh, for life, and he, he wrote that in uh, uh, Exodus 19. On the exercise 19 team, but so it was never meant for life. And you know what's so funny is that a lot of these fundamentalist churches they sell Scofield reference Bibles. They? Yeah, fundamentalist. See, you see, see the attitude towards fundamentalist people. Now you got these guys, the Buckman people. Oh, we're going to protect fundamentalism from the uh, Anderson people. They have contempt for fundamentalists. You know what's funny? They sell funny with Scofield Bibles. Yeah, it talks about different uh, uh, gospels also. You guys always talking, always yapping about, uh, oh, oh, you know, you, uh, you uh, look, uh, they were looking forward to the cross. We know from 1917, uh, uh, Schofield's Bible, that wasn't true. Uh, I'm not going to mention the, those fundamentalist churches' name, you know, but you'll know who I'm talking about. But there's a large fundamentalist church that may not believe that. They'd be surprised if they looked up in their Schofield reference Bible. They wouldn't be surprised. They know. Now, that caused Schofield a lot of heat. Now, dispensation has a lot of heat. Because it's a very confusing footnote, because it contradicts what he said in other passages. You got it. Okay, here's a quote. As a dispensation... He did not teach this. He put a footnote. That's all. This is not... It's one thing put a footnote, another thing to teach it, people. He wrote on Exodus 19 that the law was not a means for life. Grace begins with the death and resurrection of Christ. The point of testing is no longer... Legal obedience as a condition of salvation, but acceptance or rejection of Christ. You know? Yeah, and I think what Scofield was thinking of, he's looking at the na national, going from national to individual. Remember, the Mosaic Covenant was a national covenant. And so the salvation of the nation was based on obedience. That's what I think Scofield was talking about. And the pre the area of footnote in there, he's talking about what law does and what uh, grace does. And remember, the Mosaic Covenant was a national covenant. That's why it has to have a new covenant. The covenant that's removed, the new covenant, is the Mosaic Covenant. So I think that's what Schofield meant on that, not the idea of individual salvation. God was, God was done with the nation of Israel. They rejected him. So no longer was based on the, the salvation of the nation, based on obedience. But now it was going to be based on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, individual salvation, eternal salvation. Got a kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven issue going on. Believe me, look at your old look if you have it right now, look at your old Scopio reference Bible, John chapter one, verse seventeen, footnote number one. I have it with me right now. If you're interested, I'll even show it to you. In nineteen thirteen, William Evans revealed different salvation plans. Long before Ruffman. Quote This is sometimes called the age of the church or the church period. The characteristic of this age. <clears throat> I see you now this first footnote. Thank you, right here. Salvation plans. Long before Ruffman. Quote, this is sometimes called the age of the church or the church period. The characteristic of this age <clears throat> is that salvation is no longer by legal obedience, but by the personal acceptance of the finished work of Jesus Christ, who by his meritorious ministry has procured for us a righteousness of God. By Evans' book, Outline Study of the Bible, page 34. All right, here's something interesting. In over to Schofield. As if they looked up in their Schofield reference Bible, they got it. Okay, here's a quote. As a dispensation, grace begins with the death and resurrection of Christ. The point of testing is no longer legal obedience as a condition of salvation, but acceptance or rejection of Christ. 
You don't believe it? Look at your old school. Look, if you have it right now, look at your old Schofield reference Bible, John chapter 1, verse 17, footnote number 1. I have it with me right now. If you're interested, I'll even show it to you. In it's actually the second part of that footnote. There's an earlier thing, but it's a summary of grace. Grace is the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man, man, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, Titus 3, 4, 5. It is therefore constantly put, set, in, set in contrast to law, under which God demands righteousness from man, as under grace he gives righteousness to man. Law is connected with Moses and works, uh, grace with Christ and faith. Law blesses the good, grace uh, saves the bad. See the obedience comes in there. Law blesses the good. That's what the Mosaic law is about. If you did good, you were blessed. Not eternal life, but you were blessed. Grace saves the bad. See, there's a salvation issue there. See, I think that's what that's what uh, 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 Schofield is really talking about. Under the law, it was obedience for blessing. They failed that test. The Mosaic law was gone. And now individual salvation was based on faith in Jesus Christ. That was a, a going for a national covenant. Not individual salvation, national covenant to individual salvation. Um, the grace you know, dealing with uh, individual salvation with grace towards uh, believing in Jesus Christ. Law demands that blessings be earned. Grace is a free gift. So, and I think that's why uh, he goes in his new, the second note is a dispensation. Grace begins with the death and resurrection of Christ. Point of testing is no longer obedience as a condition of salvation. You see, and that's that salvation, I think, is physical salvation. That's the physical salvation of living on the Mosaic law. If you, you were cursed, you died. If you want, if you if you did, did did the law, you lived. So this is physical salvation. I believe Schofield is talking about here, not eternal salvation. Uh, with Christ is eternal salvation. And that's the whole shift. The whole shift from Israel is from a national covenant to individual salvation um, under uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, that was the issue that they... They stumbled over. The whole point is, is that the Mosaic law is based on salvation of the nation as a people. And the obedience to the law, that's why they got thrown out of the land twice. So, let me go on here. 1913, William Evans revealed different salvation plans. Long before Rutherford. Quote, this is sometimes called the age of the church or the church period. The characteristic of this age <coughs> is that Salvation is no longer by legal obedience, but by the personal acceptance of the finished work of Jesus Christ, who by his meritorious ministry has procured for us a righteousness of God. By Evans' book, Outline Study of the Bible, page 34. All right, here's something interesting. In 1920, Clarence Larkin, okay, long before Ruffin, he drew it three times, all right, if you look at his dispensational truth chart. Drew thrice on church age saints resurrected and raptured up to the air where Christ is, and he did the same with the tribulation saints. Resurrected raptured. No, he didn't. He had martyrs. They're your martyrs who resurrect your bodies, and then they come back down and get the resurrected bodies, and they go back up. Uh, that's the gleanings. And resurrection of tribulational saints. This is them going getting their bodies. These are the martyrs. Souls of, of tribulational saints under the altar. They're going down to get the resurrected bodies, and that's where you see that thing come up there. That is not a resurrection of tribulation of tribulational saints. That is a the tribulational martyrs getting their bodies, according to Larkin. And that's in all three charts. All three ones that he told, told you to look at, they all had the same thing. The gleanings that uh, Larkin talks about are uh, tribulational martyrs who have to have resurrection bodies. So Larkin has them coming, coming back down to get resurrection bodies. Up to the air, meaning what Christ in the air. All right? <laughs> all right? No. No. Obviously, you can't read. These are found in pages 94 to 95, 106, and 108 to 109 in his famous classical book, Dispensation. Yeah, the gleanings, the martyrs. They're not being raptured like we're raptured. Our bodies are changed. We're up. These are martyrs who are killed, who go to heaven, under the altar, and then come down and get body, resurrected bodies. Guy can't read. Got PhD. All right, in 1922, E.W. Bullinger revealed different salvation plans. Quote, our righteousness, 
this is superseded. So he's talking about the righteousness at Deuteronomy 6.25, Old Testament righteousness, right? That was personal righteousness to keep you alive. The difference in the walk was the righteousness that you you had to use for your walk out was outward. You obeyed the law. Now we have an inward righteousness that our, our, our righteousness comes from inward in from the inner man outward. That's the difference. We bear fruit from the in man, you know, inside out. They bore their fruit from the outside in. And what, what, what Bonga is talking about there in Deuteronomy is talking about how they saved their lives, they kept alive. Verse 24, these guys won't tell, tell you anything. The whole, the whole, the, the whole rotten group of them, a bunch of liars. And the, Lord's uh, and the Lord commanded to us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God, to our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it, as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. It's our righteousness. Let me do salvation. That's still preserving your physical life. That's why he won't be the early verse. This is superseded by Romans 10, 4, Romans 10, 5, Galatians 1. Well, I'm going to put, look, put a link. I put these comments down. They, they ignore them. Blake will ignore them. Kim will ignore them. You should see how he manipulates the thing when he, uh, dealing with James Knox. They ignore them. They're too deep. They're Bible, real Bible believers. They can't even read a lock and chart. In Galatians 1, 12. That true then. So back then, their own righteousness. This true now. Christ's righteousness. Those verses. Yeah, that's our salvation. They won't talk about salvation in Deuteronomy 6.25. You want to get fouled up, go to Bonga. <laughs> he believes the uh, church age began in Acts 28. Yeah. If you look at those verses, that's what we got. We got Christ righteousness, not our own. Plus salvation. Own anymore. But back then in the Old Testament, they had to go by their own righteousness. Oh, uh, not for salvation. For physical life. Under the law, they had to live under the law. Therefore, that was their walk. And if they disobeyed the law, they died. Right, we're, I'm going to show you those verses. In the most cases. Later on, all right? Anyway, no discrepancy if the dispensations are rightly divided according to Second. Of course not. One's on dealing with physical life, the other one's dealing with eternal life. And our walk is from in, inward out. We have man, new man in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. So we bear fruit from in, inside outward. Their fruit they bore was from the outside in. That bore, was, that bore was credit to their own personal righteousness. Do you know what this guy says in, uh, in Hebrews 11? They did those works in order to keep their salvation. In uh, Hebrews 11. This guy says that in his book. He thinks the, the works that those guys did didn't show their salvation, but was to keep their salvation. That's how none of these people are. 72.15. In, in his companion Bible. Look at his companion Bible. Footnote on Deuteronomy 6.25. Yeah, it's about life. Physical life. Not eternal life. All right. Didn't you know this became widespread, different salvations, that even Calvinists had to tell them to not listen to dispensationalism? In 1944... Yeah, that's what the big, the big issue was, because they were teaching another plan of salvation. They said, wait, and the dispensationalists fought against this. And, oh, we're not teaching another plan of salvation. We're not teaching faith and works in the Old Testament. We believe in faith alone in every testament. We're just teaching different gospels and different revelation, because of revelation. But we're not teaching two, two ways of salvation. We're adding works. They weren't that crazy. The anti-dispensationalists, the Calvinists, because they're all about covenant theology. I'm going to explain to you about those dispensational camps, all right? But anyway, the Calvinists accused dispensationalists for teaching different salvation plans. They all held a meeting on that. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Because they couldn't understand the issue of a preaching of gospel as opposed to preaching of different means of salvation. That's what they had a confusion on. Before. And of course, they jumped on the Schofield note. So you see that? You're saying the law. That's what Ruckman jumped on. But I don't think Scofield was saying that. I think Scofield was saying the Mosaic law was a national covenant versus individual salvation uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a unanimous opinion of your committee that dispensationalism is out of accord with the system of the doctrine set forth in the confession of faith, not primarily or simply in the field of eschatology. Faith and works to be out of accord of any Christianity. Any Christianity. Because you can't have works with grace. Theology, but because it attacks any true, any true, you know, biblical, evangelical, so you know, group that believes in faith alone. It's a very heart of the theology of our church. Dispensationalism rejects the doctrine 
that God has since the fall, but one plan of salvation for all mankind, and affirms that God has been through the ages administering various and diverse plans of salvation for various groups. Long before Ruckman. All right. Well, the battle was gone long before Ruckman. Long before Ruckman. Yeah, and dispensationalists fought against it. They fought against the idea they were teaching faith and works. They weren't embracing it. That's what he won't tell you. You always get what I take you telling you. These guys will only give you part of the story because they know they've learned how to lie. In 1951, are you convinced by now? No, and he doesn't tell you what Schaefer's book on this. He doesn't give you. He just, I think he's talking. Schaefer's talking about the um, Matthew five. Is talking about the millennial state. You know, the Sermon on the Mount. But he doesn't give you the reference. You should be convinced by now, okay? If you're not convinced by now, would you like me to start all over again? And we haven't convinced anybody. You double talk. Yeah, they're sitting there like bumps in a log because they don't know what you're talking about. 30 minutes? Please no. Yeah, please no. You have enough of your lies. All right. Thank you, brother. We're convinced. I'm so convinced. Unfortunately, there are some people still not convinced, so let's keep going. Yeah, because you can give them the truth. The whole truth. See, so they give some truth. They don't give you the whole truth. 1951, Lewis Sperry Schaefer revealed different salvation plans. Quote, the essential elements of a grace administration fail, uh, excuse me, not fail, faith as a sole basis of acceptance with God. Unmerited acceptance through a perfect standing in Christ, the present possession of eternal life, in absolute security from all condemnation, and the enabling power of the indwelling spirit are not found in the kingdom administration. On the other hand, He's talking about the millennium. On the hand, it is declared to be the fulfilling of the law and the prophets. Uh, Matthew 5, 17, 18, and 7, 12. Uh, <coughs> continuing and is seen to be an extension of the Mosaic law into realms of meritorious obligation. Yeah, what's going to be happening in the millennium is that there's going to be uh, the Mosaic law comes back. Not the Mosaic law, but mosaic aspects of it in the kingdom. Well, they have they have commands and they've got uh, offerings in the temple and you've got to come to the temple you've got to obey so it's set up a, a whole different administration that's what that's what uh, Chafe is talking about different administration from the grace period with, with individual salvation it go in, the new covenant is based on the mosaic laws removed and uh, because now the, everyone's going to know the law and everyone knows what they have to do but there are going to be things that are going to come back like the holy days. Like the sacrifices, like the Sabbaths, that's Colossians uh, two seventeen. That's what uh, Chafe was saying. He was, you know, he, he quotes Matthew five. Yeah, I know the King. He's talking about the King of Gospel. He doesn't tell you where he where he read that because that would mean I I'd be able to, I'd be able to look at the context and tell you where he's from. It's a different walk in the millennium. It's a different walk in the millennium. Still faith alone to get saved. And don't go to Hebrews eleven one. You go to Hebrews, you go to uh, Romans four. He being fully persuaded. And they'll say, well, you can't be saved by sight. Well, Thomas was saved by sight. <laughs> he believed in the resurrection. All right. Now, uh, he was a saved man, but obviously, you know, he had, he, didn't believe, he had to believe in the resurrection when he saw Christ. He didn't believe him until, so I'm not going to believe until I put my hands in the side. And, uh, and he says, now, and then he said, now you see me, you believe. So you can see and believe. Whole, whole history of Jews is seeing and believing uh, with signs and wonders. I'm not going to go anymore. There's a lot more, but you can look up these guys. Long before Ruffman, many more different salvation plans were. No, it doesn't matter what's long before Ruffman. The issue is, is right or not. Now, he got Rock and Wong saying that Rock and teaches the two raptures. That's not a rapture, that's a, that's a resurrection of martyred tribulational saints who are coming back to get the resurrected bodies. That's what Rock and It's not what. You know, Buckle talks about this post trib rapture nonsense. It's all post trib rapture. What are you talking about? Everybody's got it. It's not a rapture. These guys, these guys are off the rocker. Uh, and uh, Will Brady's like totally, you know, enamored with this guy. Oh, man, uh, you know, he says, uh, uh, Jack Hiles didn't want to meet uh, Ruckman because he's too impressed with him and stuff. <laughs> Jack Hiles. <laughs> oh, my God. You talk about a deviant pervert. And, you know, he's been 10, you know, Will Gray spent 10 years with that guy? What a pervert. What a bum. And um, anybody read about that guy, you know, talk about Randy's church and his whole soul-winning farce operation. 
But uh, the point is, I'm going to deal more more on this issue. Uh, Jim Kim has already shown. If you check him, you'll find out he's not talking. He's, he doesn't know he's talking about. And again, even if other people did see differences, dispensation of the South, they'd be wrong. But the dispensational movement, as a whole, as I read from the dictionary, has rejected and rejected faith any any type of anything added to faith. The evangelical movement, the, the, the relented dispensationalism, who believe in faith alone, have said, no, we are not have any works because that would attack grace. And so when people are telling you, oh, yeah, you know, you, know, you can be a Baptist and believe in faith works in the Old Testament, you can believe, oh, Gentiles got saved by works alone in the Old Testament. Hey, you know, hey, do anything you believe in anything you want? It's baloney. But so when the non dispensationalists came up, like guys like Anderson now, going after the Ruckman guys, they would accuse the dispensations of teaching. I said, no, we're teaching different gospels. We're not teaching different plans of salvation. We're not teaching different methods, as you said. It's faith alone. But they jumped on that saying, oh, it's different gospels. You're saying they have to do work, so they obey the law. And we say, well, no, most they had to obey the law in order to stay alive and have to stay in, in the king, you know, stay in the land. And it was conditional, it's a conditional covenant. Uh, but you can't have faith and works in any, any dispensation. And anyone tells you that is lying to you. And then you've got Gentiles being saved without any faith. And that's what happened, you know, Luke 18, where the publican, as I said before, so they go in there and the guy goes in there and he's all humble and everything. He's trying to get get his sins forgiven, reconciled. He's not getting saved. It's not faith at all there. But we're going to deal more with this. And uh, this is the continual lies of Ruckman, PBI. And must, they teach him a lot. Leave out things, twist things. You know, I think this guy's a PhD. He actually believes he put he people in Hebrews 11. I'll say the heels of faith. They did those works in order to stay safe. <laughs> I'm losing. I'll stop here and put this. I'll put this up. Thank you. Amen.